Hello everybody and welcome back on Mega Given here. And yes, my voice is different because I yelled at a dog. So, um, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about lore of a township tale. If you did not catch it, we had a live stream where we actually discussed this lore and came up with some theories behind it. And today we're going to be diving in a little bit more and stating those theories in a more simplified format. Basically, the whole premise of it is there are five different civilizations that we might have evidence of, but those civilizations might also be not actually five different ones. It might be the same ones that just use different things. But before we get started, I want to mention that I did start a new channel. It's called Omega Solutions. That channel is going to be a tech channel for content creators, business owners, and people that are looking to buy certain items and they need some more advice before they buy, say, a computer or laptop. And I'll just basically rehash my advice and things that I've learned over time as I do have a lot of things I've learned that I wish I knew beforehand of buying things. So go check out that channel. Go subscribe to it. We want to get it up and running as it's going to be a very successful channel and it's very geared towards business type people. Um, and if you guys want to be content creators, that is part of a business. So hopefully it'll help you out there. But let's get back into it, everybody. Enough of this plugs. So to start off, let's mention the five different people that I believe might be civilizations within a township tale or previous civilizations that have been in a township tale. The first one is the naturalists. I say the naturalists because they might be the first ones and they're the first ones to have formed some earthworks and other things in the world of a township tale. We'll show that evidence in a second as we start them off. Next, we have the shrine builders. The people that have used stone to construct these shrines that have mythic or, or, you know, different magical powers within them that we can use as township people. The third one is the town, the previous town folk. So just basically the town folk. Those, I think, are people that are probably like us that help construct the sandstone town that we see today. And then next, we have the Hebios people, which are the people that existed and lived within the camps that are on the plains. Now, those people might have something to do with the town folk, as we do see there are some battlefields and such, uh, like, relevant in the Town to Tale universe. But we'll talk about those later. And finally, my fifth part of the people that I think there might exist is the Combat Trial people. Um, that might actually be the same as the town folk, but I want to put them on a separate thing because the technology does seem different. Um, but we'll probably look at that in a little bit. Um, there might have been more civilizations that I have not yet discovered, but today we're going to be talking about my theories of what separates these five categories and why they might be different people. They might as well be the same people, just different periods of time uh, within that same civilization. So we'll see how that is, but let's first start with the naturalists. So in this picture, you can see that I present a shrine, but not just, you know, the, the shrine itself. This is actually the archery shrine, and you can see that there is a big earthwork that's the same shape as the stone up front. But look, if, if you look at the earthwork and the stone shape, they're the same thing. And, and the stone is leaning up against the earthwork, presenting that the earthwork was there first. And this is kind of one reason why I think the naturalists might be with some of the first people, or at least before the shrine people, because the, we have these earthworks that like present old style shrines. And as you can see here in this picture, you even have some kind of earth looking symbol where you place your hand where, on, on top of the shrine that maybe the shrine people took from the ground or the previous shrine that was there before that they left part of and insert it into their own shrine. So it kind of shows that these people did have the same powers and abilities. Now, moving on, we see some pictures of some stone. This stone is very much different than any of the sandstone or the normal stone of shrines or the town. This stone is actually earth-like stone. That's why I like to call them naturalists. They're very earthworky kind of people. They build things out of the earth. And you can see here, we basically have a rock slide that might have destroyed this mountain pass. Or not, it's not mountain pass. It's the archery shrine area. It has destroyed maybe some civilization that might have lived in that specific spot. I have not found this same stone in too many other places other than this, so that's why I want to leave that there for now, and maybe that this area was actually the previous inhabited area of the naturalists, but they did build the earthworks of the other shrines in other places, and the shrine people later on must have came in and redid those shrines to make them more modern. With that said, let's actually move on to talk about the shrine people. Now, the shrine people are a little curious because we see the shrine people's work across the entire land. And when I say the shrine people, I'm talking about the, the structures 
of the gray stone with like the darker gray, almost black like stone, or maybe it's even metal, which that's something to say because I might be associated with something with the combat trial people because that one's all metal. So it might be associated there. But let's uh, talk a little bit about where are the shrine people's touch in the world. So basically you can find their touch with, with like around the town in the shrines. You can see them in the, the tower. The tower itself is probably from the shrine people. And you can also see it in the forest as the, there are shrine structures or like, you know, the stone structures in the forest. Now, these people must have had a grasp of the magic because, like I said before, it seemed like they built it over the naturalist kind of locations, like their different shrines, and they were also able to imbue the power of probably what the naturalists also had, as we see that stonework that I mentioned before within some of the shrines. Now, not all the shrines have that exact same stonework within them, so they must have had the grasp themselves without, you know, the aid of the naturalists. Maybe they used the aid of the naturalists to be able to grant that power, but we're going to say that they definitely knew what they were doing. Now, if these shrine people are the same as the town folk people, like the other ones that are probably built the sandstone town that we know of, then that's a, that's a little bit of the question. I don't know if I can accurately answer that other than the fact that the stoneworks of these of the shrine people, if I if we call them, it's very much older and it's very much run down. Another little thing I want to say if I didn't say it before was the camera that we use as the town folk that is also the same stone as the shrine people it's so it has technology of you know being able to capture light um as well, that's what cameras do but it's just something that i want to mention maybe that might be just a design feature within the game but yeah that's something i want to mention another thing we want to mention lastly about the shrine people is they definitely had some interesting powers with and like i'm just you know relating their powers to the crystals as we do see a couple of these different crystal monument kind of things where it has like floating crystal in it or so and that definitely shows that that must be a source of that magic power and if that's a source then maybe we can use that ourselves maybe in future updates or something like that we don't know but that's just something to just take note of um i still have to search a little bit further but i'm going to mention one last thing about the shrine people is that these floating crystal monuments that we see up in the dust bowl is found one in the dust bowl and two at the spawn so they might have to do something with about teleportation, I actually presume, because the teleportation potions, um, they come from bins that, you know, they are infinite in the gameplay, but they probably are not infinite. It might have been teleported into that area as we were teleported into the world. So maybe it has something to do with teleportation. I don't know. Um, but that's just something I just wanted to mention that so maybe a theory. But let's move on. So the last three people I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about them in a collective sense as I don't quite know which came first i have an idea and i will state that idea my idea is that the combat trial people were before the township people and then the town folk people were at the same time and slash maybe before the hebios people now why i say that is because the town folk people i relate them to the people that made the stone the sandstone town and the sandstone town is definitely after the shrines, as the sandstone is much more upright and built than the shrine people's build, like builds. Those are much more, you know, wrecked down and everything. So I think those definitely came after. Now, why I think they're before the, or they're after, like, townful people are after the combat trial people is because the combat trial people, they had nice, solid metal structures. And what my theory is, is that the townful people, or the town, the town, yeah, those townful people, they stole from the or soul slash maybe even took from the combat trial people to have their their technology that they have in the town as you can see there's lots of metal structures there's the forge there's like little things for your backpacks and and then there's like just there's just little little things here and there that i think they probably took from the combat trial people we can also see that there is rusted equipment and there's non-rusted parts and then there's actually put together non-rusted weapons um so now what i relate to these three of is i think the rusted equipment might have been the combat trial people and that they might have mysteriously disappeared or maybe lived the same with the with the town folk but they're definitely older as their equipment is more rusted 
and yeah like it just definitely that shows that it is before the parts now the parts might be different than the heaviest people and why i say the heaviest people are last is because the heaviest people actually have put together weapons they have the heaviest items that are only found within the heaviest camps so that kind of shows that they definitely must have been the victors and the last ones standing as they have actual weapons that are not rusted for one and that they're put together and showing that they might have won the battle and they're all nicely stored or sewed away. So that's why I think the heaviest people are last and that's where the combat trial people and the sandstone people or the sandstone town people are probably before them and I don't know when. Um, and I don't know what kind of conflicts they might have had. That's where we might have to look into it a little bit more. We do know of two battlefields. Um, yes, two. I say two because one, there's the one battlefield which everyone knows of, which is you cross a sandstone bridge and there's lumps in the ground and there's rusted equipment all over right there. Now, there's a second one. The second one is in the mountain pass. You can find rusted equipment there in the mountain pass. And then there's lumps in the ground right next to the town on the backside of the the you know the tower the or not the tower the uh town hall so that is where i think there is a second battle there might have been a second battle where they fought they fled and they died right before the town and then maybe they fled throughout the town and didn't die in the town but then died at the battle that's a whole other story for another time i got a fun story that i kind of want to equate to that it probably is false but i just want to put relate it to something in another video but i think that's where i'm going to leave it today i don't have too much evidence for the town people but it's it's interesting enough that you know i want to mention it and that's basically my conclusion of why there might be five people and let me know what your thoughts are comment down below your theories maybe comment what you disagree on and what kind of evidence you have again with your stuff i don't have full evidence for mine so it's okay if you don't have evidence you just want to state your theories that's fine uh like the video subscribe so you can hear more of this awesome lore videos and i will see you next time